In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, greetings, beloved in Christ, in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Christ Jesus. In today's text, thus Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 through to 29, we have again two important themes, which are as follows. The condition of being shut up under the sin. That is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 to 22. And also the theme of the coming of faith. Galatians chapter 3, 23 to 29. In Galatians chapter 3, 19 to 22, this is one of the most difficult passages that Paul has ever written. The main purpose of Paul here was to show and rather demonstrate the superiority of the way of grace and faith over the way of the law. In Galatians 3, 23 to 29, Paul made four points about the law. And these are as follows. Why was the law introduced? The law was introduced for the sake of transgressions. What the Apostle Paul meant here is that where there is no law, there is no sin. A man cannot be condemned for being wrong if one did not know that it was wrong. The function of the law is to define sin. The law can only define sin and it can do nothing, whatever, to cure the sin. Here, it is like a doctor who is an expert in diagnosis, but who is helpless to clear up the trouble which you would have diagnosed. So this is what the law did. The law only pointed to the sin without having a proper way of dealing with the sin. Number two, how was the law given? If we can read Exodus chapter 20, we learn that the law was given direct to Moses. This is what we get from Exodus chapter 20. But during the times of the Apostle Paul, the rabbis of the time were so impressed by the holiness and the remoteness of God, that they believed that it was quite impossible for God to deal directly with humanity. To the effect that the rabbis introduced the idea that the law was given first to angels, and then the angels are the ones who gave Moses the law. So according to them, God did not give the law direct to Moses. We can compare this with Galat with X chapter 7 verse 53 and also Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2. In Galatians 3 19 to 22 Paul is using the rabbinic thoughts of his time. The law is at a double remove from God. It was initially given to the angels by God and then the angels gave the commandments to Moses. But the promise that God gave to Abraham it was directed by God, but the law was a second-hand thing. Beloved in Christ, the main difficulty of this text is on Galatians chapter 3 verse 20. And it says, But a go-between is not needed, which only one person is involved and God is one. And other versions, they also say there can be no such thing as a mediator of one, and God is one. Here we need to go deep down to bring out the idea that Paul had. We need to understand that an agreement founded on law always involves two people. That is the person who gives it 
and the person who is to accept it. The law depends on both sides keeping it. This is the position of those who put their trust in the law. If one party breaks the law, the whole agreement becomes undone. We need to understand that a promise depends on only one person. The way of grace depends entirely on God. It is his promise. A person can do nothing to alter, to alter that. We may sin, but the love and the grace of God will stand unchanged. But this does not mean to say, neither this does not give us a license to live a life of anyhow, just because the love and the grace of God will always stand unchanged. We need to live holy lives as our Father is holy. According to Paul, it was the weakness of the law that it depended on two persons, the lawgiver and the lawkeeper. Unfortunately, humanity broke the law. On the other hand, grace is entirely of God. Humanity cannot undo it, and surely it is better to depend on the grace of the unchanging God than on the hopeless efforts of helpless humanity. Beloved in Christ, we need also to understand, or maybe to go to an extent of trying to make an inquiry whether is the law the opposite to grace? Is the law antithetic to grace? And Paul answered no. Paul argued that scripture has shut up everyone under sin. This is driven from Deuteronomy 27 verse 26 where it is said that everyone who does not conform to the words of the law is cursed and for sure it's not easy it's not easy and it will never be easy to fulfill the demands of the law this means everyone because no one ever has or ever will perfectly keep the law we need to ask now what then is the consequence of the law the law is to drive everyone to seek grace. The law is meant to drive everyone to seek grace because it has proved many helplessness. It has proved men's helplessness. No man can keep a right relationship with God through the law. We just need to accept the wonderful grace of God we need to accept the wonderful grace of which Jesus Christ came to tell us. Finally is the theme of the coming of faith. And this we have it from Galatians chapter 3, 23 to 29. Paul is still thinking of the essential part that the Lord did play in the plan of God. Paul argued that the law is a tutor. The law was there to lead humanity to Christ. The law could not take humanity into Christ's presence, but it could take us into a position where one might enter into the presence of Christ. It is the function of the law to bring a man to Christ by showing him that by himself he was utterly unable to keep it. But once a man had come to Christ, he no longer needed the law. For now he was dependent not on the law, but on grace. All those who have been baptized into Christ have put on Jesus Christ. And now that we have mentioned a very important subject of baptism, we need to go a little bit deeper to understand the meaning of the word baptism. Therefore, is to ask the question, what is baptism? This is, in its origin, it is a Jewish rite. If a man wished to accept the Jewish faith, he had to do three things, which are 
He had to be circumcised. He had to offer sacrifice. And lastly, he had to be baptized. If we read Leviticus chapter 11, verse 15, we will learn that ceremonial washing to be cleansed from defilement was very common in the Jewish practice. The details of the Jewish baptism were as, are as follows. The man to be baptized he had to cut his hair and his nails. He had to undress completely. The baptismal bath had to contain some significant amount of water so that every part of the body had to be touched by the water. The person had to make a confession of his faith before three men who were called the fathers of baptism. And now in our era, we call these three people the God parents. While he's still in the water, pass of the law was to be read to him. Words of encouragement were addressed to him and also the benedictions were pronounced upon him. When the person emerged, automatically he was a member of the Jewish faith. It was through baptism that one entered into the Jewish faith. Now, with this information, we also need to understand the meaning of baptism in this Christian faith. By Christian baptism, a man entered into Christ. The early Christians looked on baptism as something very important, as something which produced a real union with Jesus Christ. Baptism is not merely an outward form. It is really a union with Christ. We can read this from Romans chapter 6 verse 3, Colossians chapter 2 verse 12. Those who have been baptized, they have put on Christ. The candidate for baptism was clothed in the early church. The candidate for baptism was clothed in pure white robes, a symbolic to new life into which one has entered. Now in these pure white robes, the result was that in the church there was no difference between any of the members. They had all become sons of God. Thus in Galatians 3 verse 28, the Apostle Paul wrote that there is no more distinction between Jew and Greek, slave or free man, male or female. All the old distinctions were gone. All were now in Christ. In Galatians 3 verse 16, Paul interprets the promises made to Abraham as specifically finding the fulfillment in Christ. If we are one in Christ, we too inherit the promises. This great promise comes not by legalistic keeping of the law, but by an act of faith in the free grace of God. May the Lord Christ Jesus help us to deepen our understanding, especially in the insights which we always share with the children of God for our own spiritual edification. We need to be better equipped so that when hard times approaches us, we'll be having our knowledge that we are going to use to defeat all the fury dust of the devil. May the church of God remain blessed. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Whenever you're down, out in the cold, faithless and dark, your story's untold. Come take my hand and walk there with me. I know a place where we can be free. There is a light shining for you, guiding you. Help me.
the deep.